Hi everybody. In today's episode, I want to follow up on where we left off yesterday in yesterday's Facebook Live post. That is right before we went out to dinner for our what I call transition dinner. Now the transition dinner was for two young lads who are transitioning from middle school to high school. And we created this event that was going to mark this process, this transition from middle school to high schools. The two young lads happen to be my twin sons. So if you're interested in this process and how I approached transitioning and marking this occasion through this event and then what happened at the dinner, this would be an episode you'd be interested in. So here's how it went. But before I jump ahead, my name's Phil Black. I run an online mentoring program called Prepwell Academy where I help advise and mentor rising freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors to try to help them make smart decisions about high school, about college, about majors, about career, and about life. I'm a former Navy SEAL, a Goldman Sachs investment banker, Yale and Harvard Business School graduate, Shark Tank contestant, entrepreneur, firefighter, husband, and father of four sons, two of them, which we'll be talking about tonight. Now I say that, and this is a pretty personal episode, because it leads to the, to the point that when I work with my prep wellers, those people who are enrolled in my program, I do far more than college admissions counseling. Yes, we talk about signing up for the SAT. Yes, we talk about whether they should take the SAT or the ACT and about resumes and about deadlines and about demonstrated interest and how to make a targeted list of schools and a balanced list of schools. Yes, we do all that blocking and tackling. However, What's different about Preppel Academy and me is I go way beyond that. I talk about real life issues that go way beyond admissions counseling. That's why I want to talk about this particular event last evening. It was great. It was a dinner. I went with my two sons and one of my close friends and my son's mentor, Coach Riley. And now, as you, if you watched yesterday's episode, I sent my two sons 11 key words that in my mind represent a lot of what's going to be happening as they transition from eighth grade to ninth grade and through high school. And I ask them to pick five of their favorites and to think about and reflect on how those five words were relevant for them as they moved into high school. So the dinner kicked off. It was great. By the way, I, I'll give you a quick preview of what we did before that, just to get their minds right, to make sure they were open and ready to have this type of discussion. We did a little surf trip before we went surfing. We jumped off a 20 foot bridge into a river. We took the river mouth all the way in, a little brackish water right to the edge where it turned into surf, went surfing and paddle boarding. Quick little shower rinse off and off to a great restaurant we went. So everybody was in a great mood. We got a little exercise in, got a little activity, got a little adrenaline going, jumping off the bridge. You can watch yesterday's, uh, yesterday's Facebook post to see about that. So everyone was open and ready for this discussion. And we did a lot of listening. We did some talking, but we wanted to listen too. We didn't want to lecture them and tell them these are the rules, these are the immutable laws of life. We didn't want to do that. We wanted to hear from them. Now my guys are on the introverted side, but they brought it. They really came to play. They had thought about their five words and we talked about them. Struggle, discipline, preparation. Um, and we had a whole host of words. Each of them had slightly different words that they brought up, which is interesting given that they're identical twins. And we worked through all those words and they told us what those words meant to them. Were they struggling with them or not? Did they feel like they had things under control? And we got into, into the weeds on some stuff. My whole goal for the dinner and for the event was to feel like I laid everything out on the table. That there was a moment in time when my two sons said, wait a second, my dad and my closest mentor, Coach Riley, they sat us down and they laid out what, where they stand on things, what their expectations were, their, their troubles, their successes, their failures through middle school and through high school. So we laid that all out and we listened to them to hear what they were anxious about, if anything, what they were excited about. And we got everything out in the open. I mean, we went deep. We talked sex, we talked drugs, we talked competition, we talked sports, we talked academics, we talked expectations, societal, parental, peer expectations. We got into the weeds. And it got a little uncomfortable, but it was awesome. I had my wingman, Coach Riley, with me. We were going back and forth, volleying back and forth. The kids were throwing stuff at us. We dug back into them. We put it all out on the table. And I'm very happy about that. 
because I know that as we go forward, I feel like we have some breakthroughs. I feel like the kids now trust us more. There's an open conversation. We talked about some funny stuff, some uncomfortable stuff. And I feel like now that I gave them a piece of my mind, and now that I have peace of mind, knowing that I laid it out for them. And one of the big takeaways was this. They are going to encounter choices, decisions, oftentimes in the heat of battle, in the heat of romance, in the heat of peer pressure, whatever it might be. So our strong suggestion to them was to be very explicit before they go into high school about where they stand on these issues. Sex, girls, rock and roll, drugs, you name it. To have a plan ahead of time, pre-established an identity that they know where they stand so that when the heat starts getting a little hot, that they're not wavering back and forth and they're not on unsure footing and they make a bad choice. Now, listen, everybody's gonna make bad choices. There's no guarantee that anybody's gonna make the right choices, but we feel like we made a pretty good case about taking a stand and holding the line and the discipline on a couple of very important choices. Now it's gonna be up to them to figure out, are they gonna go in there with a strong identity, strong value system, and are they ready to hold the line when the kids start pushing, the kids start peer pressuring, the girls start coming in there, and everything starts going crazy. I hope and I pray that they're gonna be equipped for that. I hope this has been helpful. I would love to hear from you, whether this was interesting or not, whether you really care about the personal comings and goings of Phil Black and his sons and our mentor and Preppel Academy. Please share this with somebody who might have somebody who's a rising freshman. Now, by, mind you, it, it could be a rising sophomore, junior, senior as well. These talks have to be done a lot, the more the better. But I wanted to make sure I got mine done officially, so to speak, in somewhat of a formal, formal setting before they entered high school. Now, we're already starting to brainstorm about what we're going to do in four years when we have another one of these powwows before they go to college, then after they graduate from college, and then if they wind up getting married, we're going to do this, the same thing again. So we have three more things going on that we're very excited about. But this one was important in general. So if you have somebody who thinks who you think this might be interesting for, please share this with them. Please tag them on this. And if you've done something, I'd love to know. This is my first time around with two sons entering high school. So please let me know. Have you done something with them that you think has been helpful? Now, there were some things that we didn't quite cover. We didn't talk too much about faith and, um, and community. And um, what else? There was something else that I wanted to cover. Um, there were a couple things that we didn't cover, community, um, that we didn't quite cover as much as I wanted to because there were some limitations. We ran out of time. And anyway, there are some other things that I think some other celebrations do, like bar mitzvahs, bat mitzvahs, quinceaneras, sweet 16s. There are plenty of other things that mark the transition from middle school to high school. I wanted to create my own, and I gave them a couple of symbolic gifts, which you can see down in the last uh, in the last pot in the last Facebook Live. But please give me some comments, give me a thumbs up, or tell me, hey, I'm way off the off base, and I should have done this, or I should have considered that, because I have two more kids coming up the ranks, and I'd love to try to get this right. So please give me your suggestions. You should have tried this. Did you try that? How did it go? What were their questions? Please let me know. I'd love to get some feedback. Put those in the comments below. And as I told you, I am committed to, wow, a lot of mosquitoes out here at dusk. I am committed to coming out here, Facebook Living, every single morning of the summer, trying to give you tips, help, guidance, and just someone to bounce things off as we try to help our kids manage this process of high school, of life, of college, of, of, of decisions. So please tune in tomorrow as well, and uh, we'll get something else done. Thanks for listening, and see you tomorrow.